Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to part 17 of this Baldur's Gate 3 Trophy and Achievement Walkthrough. We are in the Blighted Village and now we're going to head over toward the Githyanki Crash. All we have to do is go a little bit north and then we're going to head over toward the west so that we can continue on. So let's get started. We're just going to align ourselves toward the north and we're just going to run this way. So if you're starting at the waypoint in the Blighted Village, just run past the cart and then keep going. You'll see a big gate straight ahead. You wanna go up to that gate and then open it and then that will let you through to the next area. In this area, you may recognize on the right side is the large barn where we interrupted a bugbear having some intimate fun. And we're going to keep running along this path. The game should autosave right around here. If you haven't met Raphael already, like we did in the Underdark, you'll probably meet him right here. So let's get over to this side and then we're just going to jump across this broken bridge to make it to the other side. <laughs> So now we're back into the Risen Road. There's a lot of alcohol in this area, so if you haven't gotten the Bottoms Up trophy by having a long rest using only alcohol, this is a great place to finish off getting all the alcohol that you need for that. There's also some uh, thieves tools and a trap disarm toolkit right around here. And then if you come up to this cart along the way, there'll be a little bit more alcohol. There's also a book on the back of the cart over here. So make sure you read that. Like I say in all the videos, make sure you're reading all the books you come across because you need to read 100 of them throughout the course of one playthrough. Now, as you run over to the side here, this is back the way we came there'll be blood on the ground you want to go up the path and you want to sneak up here because there's some knolls at the top this is a new enemy that we haven't really seen before now if you read the map inside of Minthara's room in the goblin camp she actually wrote that there were knolls up here to the north of the village so this is just confirmation of that and what we want to do is to get the early head start on this fight by using a Starion to do a sneak attack range attack. We can start to eliminate these guys and take out their health before we get into the fight. Now there's not a whole lot going on with this battle. We do have them try to rush us. Some of them do have bows. They can attack us at range, but they're not very difficult for us, especially at this point. We're at a pretty good level, and if you're playing on the Explorer difficulty especially, these guys go down really without too much of an issue here. And because we are at level 5 or above at this point, we should be able to have that extra attack, which just makes us that much more lethal to the enemies. So I fast forwarded to the end of that fight. If you run around, you can see the blood trail going down. Now you want to be very careful at this point as well, because there's there's a lot of hyenas down there and they have a little bit of a surprise when we get too close so take your time sneak up here and then do some more sneak attack range attacks we want to take these guys out before they see us so we're able to take out you know maybe two of them at this point before the real surprise comes our way so let's take out one hyena and now we're going to take out another one down here and then as we sneak forward just a little bit more you'll see the surprise that i'm talking about the bloated hyenas on the ground will explode and they will turn into newborn gnolls. Now, luckily as newborns, they're not very dangerous to us. They do just want to rush toward us and we're able to take them out from a distance. We do have the nice height advantage because we came up the hill and back down. If you were to come the other way, go for those hyenas first, then you would also probably aggro the group at the top of the hill and that makes things a lot more dangerous for you. So be very careful. Also in this area, there's a lot more alcohol there's also some uh, wine barrels that can explode so if you want to use some fire you can also cause explosions around here there's going to be a lot of books and scrolls around this area as well in fact there's a couple of them right together here there's three right on the ground next to each other so pay attention to what's on the ground if you hold down the X button on the PlayStation controller you can actually scan a whole area and that really helps you to sort out what's in an area especially when there's a whole lot of things in one zone Zone, it makes it very easy to find what you're looking for. So at this point, we're going to continue on. We're just going to keep going down through this area. We're going to cross this bridge, and that's going to take us into a familiar area. If you remember when we picked up Karlak, we came up here and we fought these false paladins of Tyr, and this is right in this building here. Well, we're going to now turn, and we're going to go a little bit farther toward the north, and we're just going to kind of complete this area of the map. 
So as we run through here, there is going to be a waypoint just a little bit further on. We're not really going to use this so much, but just for the sake of map completion, here you can see where it is. So if you ever need to come back here for some reason or another, you now have a fast travel point for that. Now we're going to continue down this path a little bit and we're going to stick pretty much toward the right side here. Now what we want to do is to proceed up the cliffs just ahead of us here. We're going to go up and then we're just going to stick toward the right hand side. We're going to get ourselves into another good position to start off a fight. I always like to take the high ground if possible. It just helps out a lot for numerous reasons. And as we go along the right side here, you can and see some enemies up ahead we're going to ignore them right now keep going out of the way to stay out of their line of sight you can also pick up some crafting materials on the way and maybe unlock a new recipe while you're at it and now there's going to be some enemies up on top of the cliff here so once again we're going to switch over to a starion and we're going to sneak our way up and when you're in position, just use one of these sneak attack ranged attacks to start this fight off. We'll be able to take out one or two of the enemies before they can even see us. Now killing one of them will cause the other ones to come up and investigate. And you'll probably be spotted unless you run away at this time. But we do have a really nice starting point here. They're going to all funnel toward us here and we're able to kind of keep them uh, kind of staged all together there while we start to pick them off. So using range attacks or running melee characters up you can definitely get into a good position where you start knocking these enemies out pretty easily now this fight has a very special aspect to it because there is technically another true soul another parasite infected enemy here and normally you have conversations and dialogues with them and you can you know figure out that they are infected and sometimes you can delve into their mind well this time we can actually take control of the enemy and have it work for us that's not something that we've seen before especially after starting combat with them so i will show you what that looks like there's also a couple allies in the fight that are really just cowardly hiding inside the cave they are part of a special side quest that we'll work on too uh, we're not gonna finish that one necessarily but we'll get a really cool item at the end of it so let's just keep going forward and we'll use our melee characters to do melee attacks we'll use our ranged characters to do ranged attacks and we'll just keep working on this enemy group until we get to the point when we can use our lithid powers hear that someone's fighting the nose we should help don't be a fool, lad. Shut your mouth and keep your head down. Leave the heroics to them that don't value their own skin. All right, so there you see the people down in the cave there. They did throw out a little bit of fire, so now there is a little bit of a barrier for them, and that will come into play with a choice that we have when we actually take control of one of the enemy's minds over here. So I'm just going to kind of skip ahead to that point. There's really nothing more interesting here. You can just see that there are a lot of enemies kind of gathering up in this area. So let's skip ahead to when we get the choice to uh, have a conversation with the enemy. The shock of psychic pain, the pack leader's mind clamps onto yours. You see yourself through her eyes, a pulsing red cluster of organs. Feast. No, the voice has forbidden this meat. Nor will see your whole world as a meal. This voice is acting as a leash, but it won't hold them for long. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. At this point, we could command her to run through the flames and attack the men in the cave. We could also withdraw from her mind and continue the fight as usual. But we don't want to do those things. Instead, we're going to search her mind for the source of the voice. A memory. The beast daubs the symbol of the absolute on a cave wall in the blood. Very deep. A tadpole struggles to assert control against the ravenous chaos of her mind. Now let's get her to work for us. Elithid Wisdom, you are of the same pack. Command her to devour the other gnolls. Here we have a skill check looking for only a two, so as long as we don't roll a one and get a critical failure, we're good to go. Sensing your presence, the gnoll's tadpole writhes in ecstasy echoing your command. Its host will feast on null flesh to control the hunger, to keep her teeth from your throat. 
A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. And with that, we get a very good chunk of experience, and the enemy will start to attack the other gnolls in the area and do lots of damage and start taking them out for us. That's a really nice advantage, but we won't be done until we also take out Flint herself. So we're going to just keep making progress on the other enemies with Flynn's assistance, and then we're going to continue on with talking to Flint and see what we can do to make her take herself out as well. a hungry pit. The flesh of her pack wasn't enough to satisfy her. Wisdom. Dominate her mind, commanding her to feast on herself. We get a skill check looking for a 10. Let's go ahead and roll that. Her tadpole responds, thrashing violently and the fragile tissue of her brain tears and splits. You taste the blood in her throat, feel it pooling in the cavity of her skull, but she still resists. Wisdom, harness your willpower and order her to devour herself. A skill check looking for a 15 this time, a little bit more difficult, but if you fail, you can always just use one of the many inspiration points that we've earned throughout this point, and we can continue on. So I did fail, but I used the inspiration point and I got it the second time around. Your tadpole wriggles, contented, as she tears out her own throat. And just like that, you win and get a cutscene from the men in the cave. It might be used by the gods. You're a sweet sight. Are any of my crew still alive out there? No, it's a grim sight. This whole journey's been one grim sight after another. Knolls, goblins, drow. Risen roads more dangerous than ever. You're the first friendly face we've seen since Eltergard. Altered guards a long way from here. Where are you heading? We're bound for Baldur's Gate. Got some cargo to deliver. But we've a stop to make along the way. Where's that? Joaquin's Rest. It's just up the road. I'd be enjoying a mug of ale right now if those beasts hadn't jumped us. Listen, you look like you know how to handle yourself. You should meet my associates. We've got our own drinking spot by the tavern. Invitation only. Tell the fellow on the door. Little serpent, long shadow. He'll take good care of you. What's in the chest? Your cargo? Aye, the whole reason we're in this mess. Trinkets for some rich tosser in Baldur's Gate. He gets his shiny baubles. We get a handful of Taranths. Taranths are the currency of the Zentarim, a network of merchants and mercenaries with few scruples. Your Zentarim, your people don't deal in baubles. You know who we are. Very clever. And you probably also know it's not smart to interfere with Zent business. This is the point when a clever lad like you accepts my gratitude and walks away. Persuasion. This is your employer's mess, but we can profit. Let's sell the cargo ourselves. We have a skill check looking for a 15. If you have any sort of advantages here, go ahead and use them to make this a little bit easier. I like the way you think. Didn't expect to turn this horror show to my advantage, but why not? The chest's all yours. Damn things sealed tighter than a duke's purse strings. So there's no point in trying to open it. I know a fence in Baldur's Gate who'll take it off your hands. Nobody will be the wiser. Don't try to cut me out of the deal, though. The Black Network has eyes and blades everywhere. Crafty swine like you could make a name for yourself in the Zahentarim. Make sure to drop by our hideout. Before you go on, make sure that you loot Flynn's body. There is a Mind Flayer Parasite specimen inside there. 
So we want to grab that in case you want to keep growing your Alithid powers. Now at this point you have a choice. The Caravan Strong Box is right ahead here and what you can do is you can take it to the Zentarim and you're able to get a reward for it or you can use a Sarian to open up the box and take the contents for yourself. I'm not really going to bother with bringing it back to the Zentarim and doing all of that. You certainly can if you want to but I just know that I'm pretty easily able to lockpick this box and just take what's inside of it for myself without really dealing with them. It's not really trophy related or anything so I'll show you what's in here uh, just for the fun of it there's the iron flask a little bit of gold and also a silver ingot for me so I grab all that now we're basically just going to follow the path west from here until we get to Joaquin's rest and as we go I'll explain that iron flask a little bit that we just picked up Inside the Iron Flask is a powerful enemy called a Spectator. And what you can do is if you get into a fight with a lot of different enemies, you can toss the Iron Flask into the group of enemies and the Spectator will come out and it will be hostile to everything in the area. So all the enemies will start to focus on the Spectator and the Spectator will fight kind of on your side at that point. Now, whoever is victorious amongst those two groups, you'll still have to kill off to finish the fight. So it's kind of a one-time ally thing that you can really use to even the odds if things aren't going your way if you're very outnumbered. So keep that in mind. It's just something that you can use if you want to help yourself out in a fight going forward. Well, now we made it to Joaquin's Rest. We're going to go through the shabby wooden doors. This place is on fire. It looks like it was attacked here. What we want to do is head over to the main area here. There's going to be a fountain. And on the other side of the fountain, there are a bunch of people pushing against a wooden door. You want to switch to a character who has high strength. And then you want to interact with the door to start a cutscene. Strength. Push against the wreckage. We get a skill check looking for only a 10. Not too difficult to pass this one, especially with our strength bonus that we have. Inside! Hurry! We don't have much time. For doing that dramatic entrance, we do complete one of the soldier rolls background goals and we're able to get an inspiration point. And now we're going to go up the stairs and we're going to run around the side here and we will eventually get to a barricade that all we have to do is do some sort of attack to break it down and then the person who is trapped on the other side will come out and we'll get a short scene. Come! I'm afraid Papa thanks must wait. Okay, now there is another person that we can rescue, but it comes with a little bit of risk to us. So let's go over here to this door, and we can open it up, and it's going to cause a little bit of an explosion, doing very little damage to us. But then we're going to run inside, and we're going to rescue the trapped man. So let's go over to the side here and talk to him. Strength, brace yourself to lift the wreckage. A skill check looking for a 10. Let's roll this one and continue on. Come on, follow me. <coughs> right, I'll try to keep up. So, a couple things to note here. There is a book called The Eyewitness Account. I guess it's more of a scroll. You can go ahead and read that one. It's right here. And then what we need to do is to get the man out of the burning building. If you wait too long, he actually will die in this area. So, time is of the essence as you're getting through this. Now, what you want to do is look over toward the side of the room where he was on, and there's actually going to be a broken door. Just like before, where we got the other person out, we are able to attack this, and that 
provides a nice opportunity for us to get Let's out of hit. here pretty easily. So because this is a dangerous situation, it does put you into turn-based mode. You can turn that off just by opening up the menu with the R2 uh -huh. button, and then you can choose to turn off the uh, turn-based mode. So I'm just going to keep it on because I didn't know that at the time that I recorded this. So I am going to kind of just struggle through this, but basically get everyone outside and then you're going to continue on once he's safe. He's going to move on into the next building once we're all out. And now let's go have a chat with him. No. Mary. No. Gods, no, no, no. You should have stayed. You should have been with me. It wouldn't have made a difference. She would have survived. If only I kept my mouth shut about that bloody dowry. What am I going to do? She's all I had. You'll be all right with time. This will never be right. Please, just go. I need a moment with her. Well, let's talk to him one more time. <laughs> Didn't you say something about a dowry? It's for a sister's wedding. I made a stupid joke about keeping it. We argued about it for hours. Then she took the dowry and left. Let's choose to leave. Now, what you can do is we can go and actually collect it. It is hiding in this area. What you really need to do is go behind the house. There's a couple stables. One of them has like a very angry cow or ox inside of it. Inside the other one, the one that does not have that animal, there's going to be a hay bale and you are actually able to find a treasure chest back in that area. So I'm not gonna show it, but if you are interested, you can go ahead and get that that there's going to be a fairly expensive ring back in that area so go ahead and pick that up if you want to you can either bring it back to him to be nice or you can sell it if you really want to so the choice is yours in that matter or you can just completely ignore it because it has nothing to do with any trophies or achievements it's just another little added thing a little puzzle and i like to show those things off as we go along i know that you guys in the comments have talked about how you like guides like this because it helps you out to get the most out of things and you don't have to really worry about figuring out all the puzzles by yourself so i really do enjoy doing all the research and playing through this to show you a really good path through the game that provides you with the most content in the most concise way possible it is kind of time consuming to do that and to produce these videos which is why my upload schedule has been a little bit slow so i apologize for that i just want to show you the best content possible well now let's get close to the person we rescued and get a cut scene Fresh air. At last. Your boldness is a blessing. I'm in your debt. Counselor, are you all right? It takes more than mere fire to break me, Yuva. Now listen close, Fist. Duty calls. Drow have taken Grand Duke Alder Ravenguard westward, if my eyes and ears can be believed. Gauntlet, report to the Manic and send for reinforcements. We must find the Duke. On your command, Counselor. The rest of you, count the dead. Take word of their sacrifice to this city. And you, I must ask again for your aid. Please, rescue Ravenguard from his drow captors. The Council will reward you for your effort. May I trust you'll see it through? The Absolute's cult is based at Moonrise Towers. That's where they'll have taken the Duke. Moonrise Towers, along the old road. That place is cursed. Few could survive there, unless darker forces are at work. This was no random attack. The Grand Duke was their target. Because this character has a Baldurian background, we can say Raven Guard's a champion to the people of Baldur's Gate. A champion indeed. He's the invisible force holding Baldur's Gate together. Without him, the city faces collapse. In fact, I fear that may have been the intention of those who abducted him. 
I'll head west and find Duke Gravenguard. Thank you. And should your courage falter, remember the Duke's generosity. Approach the towers with care. The land itself has been swallowed in shadow. I will seek reinforcements and join you when I can. Fist to work. As a reward at this point, we do get a choice between three different weapons. There's going to be a trident, a short bow, and also a two-handed mace. So take whatever one you really want to. I'm just going to take that short bow. And now what we're going to do is to continue on from here. So let's get all of our party back together. So you can see this is how you turn off the turn-based mode. And then we just go back to life as usual. And we're going to move on out of this area. So some of my characters are still up top here. I just have to wait till they come back downstairs. They were up by the man. And now we're going to continue on the way that we came. So let's run back this way. And then when we get to this main intersection, we're going to turn toward the right side and then continue on along here there is right around the corner a new waypoint that we can discover and then we're just going to go right around the corner here and as you go around here you're going to have a little bit of an interaction a dragon rider my kin are near Well, there's a dragon that came by. You definitely want to have Lazelle in your party. You don't want to talk to the next person as Lazelle, but she definitely should be here for this next part somewhere in the four party members that we have. So run over and without talking to this person as Lazelle, switch to someone else like Astarian and then go ahead and talk to the person up here. What are you doing? Hold up before they see you, Margresham. What's the matter? What? Apart from the dragon? Look. That lot are swarming all over the bridge. I don't know what they want, but it can't be good. I'm going to find another way around. You ought to do the same. Unless you're looking for a fight, that is. Who are you? Nobody. Just another harassing fool trying to stay alive. There's plenty of us around. Seems you have good survival instincts. Maybe you should join me instead. What? Just follow you around? I go my own way. Alone. Let's leave. Rag. That's it. I'm getting out of here. Take a few steps forward and you'll get a cutscene. Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that, Istik. This is y your last chance! No, look up. That was your last chance, Istik. Now burn! Wasting time, Beretta. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to. No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. A red dragon. I envy its knight. Would that I rode such a steed. A crash must be near. Come, my kin await. Let's go. At this point, Lazelle will automatically leave the party and then go down there by the other Githyanki. Be sure to save the game before going down this cliff because there is a dialogue at the bottom that we need to go our way. It is directly related to a trophy. So once you're down, head over for a cutscene. Ryder, my time is short. Lead me to... Shh, shh, shh. Such a familiar tone. Were I not merciful, I would slice the skin clean from your meat. Yet you are not bleeding, for I am nothing if not merciful. Your name, child. Nod to Lazel. Go ahead. Lazel. Lazel. Proud. Regal, even. You will call me Gestil Kithrak. Vos, Knight Supreme, the Queen's Silver, 
the Queen's sword. I am who you say. A Gaik vessel has fallen from the sky, Lazel. Thieves aboard have taken a weapon most precious. It is polyhedric in shape and inscribed with the sacred runes of our people. You suddenly feel a strange anxiety take hold. Not your own, but that of the artifact you carry. Somehow, it's afraid you attune your mind to it. The artifact does not want to fall into the Gith Raiders' hands any more than it does the Absolute followers. Take word to your creche. You are to join our search. Speak up, child. Affirm your mandate. Persuasion. Mouth a silent command to Lazelle. Play along. We get a skill check looking for a 10. I do have some good bonuses on my side. However, I rolled a 1. That is a critical failure. The worst possible outcome here. So I decided to use an inspiration point and roll it again. Now, if you wanted to, you could just reload the previous save. You'll have to go through a little bit of dialogue, but it's not that bad if you do want to save that inspiration point. You honor me with this duty, Kithrak. I shall alert my caretaker with haste. The Kithrak nods content with Lazel's answer. You serve your queen well, child. Take your slaves and hunt those who escaped the Geich ship. They must carry the weapon. I fly now to Vlakith, our undying queen. She will see your faith rewarded in this plane and ours. A current of deception carries Voss's words. Wherever he flies, it is not to Vlakith. To Danos! To the sky! Damn it all! You did well to intervene, vexed as I am to admit it. The Gestil Kithrak would have flayed our skin and left our carcasses to burn in the sun. All for the sake of the artifact that we carry. The crash is near, this much we know. We follow the path forward and into the valley. No one, not even the ignobles just still Kithrak, will keep me from my purification. For successfully talking our way through that, we did get a lot of experience and we gained one inspiration point because we completed one of the charlatan background goals, also getting us a little bit of progress for the role player trophy if you have not gotten that already. So now we're going to just continue on. There's a little bit of stuff to loot in this area, so if you want to get that and then what we want to do is just head straight over a bridge and we're going to go through the mountain pass and into the Githyanki crash area. So this is the bridge it was just right ahead of us will go across it and when you get to the other side it will warn you that if you proceed on some things will transpire so if you haven't done the defense of the grove or raiding the grove or anything that will automatically happen without you so you want to make sure that that's done before you proceed on into this new area let's keep running along this path picking up alchemy ingredients as we go and eventually Lazel will talk to us wait these markings. Tirsu's script scratched in the ground. A crash must be nested in the temple below. We must go there at once. Tirsu script, you said? What does that mean? Githyanki writing. Every word a wheel. Every letter is spoke. The most powerful texts are engraved in slate. Some so ancient, only the most erudite Gish can read them. If we do too much dawdling, Lazel will go on without us, so we're going to say, come, let's get to the crash. Very well, you may lead. But if we stray too far that our chance is lost, I'll make my way there alone. Well, as you can see, there's a waypoint directly ahead of us here. Let's run just past it. And then what we ultimately want to do is head to the Githyanki Crash. If we go through the mountain pass, we're going to go right into Act 2. And we don't want to do that yet. So instead, we're going to go kind of the long way off to the right-hand side. And that will take us to the Githyanki Crash. Now, as we run around, you might hear the voice of a woman. And that gives you a good indication that there's someone new to talk to here. So let's go around the corner here and talk to Lady Esther. A friendly face. Oh, you are a sweet, sweet blessing, my dear. You know, I've had nothing but trouble all day. I've been a 
accosted, chased, insulted. Look over there. Do you see that wretched little hive? Because I'm a monk, I'll say it's a Lanthidarian monastery, a site of pilgrimage. How is it wretched? I mean no offense to the morning lord. I simply prefer when his monasteries aren't overrun with brutish, stupid, rude Gith Yankee. Brutish and rude by your wretched standards. But stupid. Chucky. Your charming companion would call it a creche. But it was built on what remained after the Gith Yankee slaughtered all of the monks. I'd call it a murderous training camp. Acutely observed on both counts. Honestly, I was doing them a favor offering to buy one of their eggs. And how am I repaid? Attacked and run off like some transient. You tried to buy one of their children? What? No, of course not. I was merely... Well... Look, it's just an egg. The Society of Brilliance asked me to acquire one of their row so they can incubate it and, once it hatches, raise the spawn in their tradition. Please, do enlighten me. What is this tradition? The Society believes a Githyanki raised in a peaceful, nurturing environment can overcome its violent nature. I'm sure your friend would agree. A Gith Yankee is as likely to forsake its violent nature as a gnome is to fly. Some things are in our blood. Only a fool would deny that. Exactly. I knew you were a learned soul from the moment I set eyes on you. Perhaps you could help me then. I may not be welcome there, but surely a person with your charm and worldliness could get into the creche. And once inside, you could simply purloin an egg. Steal one of Gith's own. I will slit your throat for even suggesting it. I'm not talking to you. You'll be well compensated, of course. Just bring me an egg. Persuasion. Fine, but I want payment up front. Here we have a skill check looking for a 21. Pretty difficult to get that, especially if you don't have Shadowheart on your team to give you a little bit of a boost. But we do roll it and we can proceed on. I suppose there is a reason I'm asking you to do it. What? Surrender an egg, and I will not stand for it. Very well. Here's the money. Now, I expect a speedy delivery. Well, we got 264 gold up front. Now, we're not going to actually give her the egg. In fact, what I'm going to do is to get an egg, but I'm going to give it to Lazelle, and that gives us a little bonus at the end of the game in the epilogue. It is the best possible outcome for the egg. It's actually the worst outcome to give it to Lady Esther. So don't do that. Well, let's head down to the cable car wheel, and we're going to choose a character that has high strength, and then interact with it. We'll get a little bit of a skill check here, looking for a 15. When we roll it and get it, then we can proceed on, and we're going to then raise a cart up from way down the ropeway here, and it's going to bring that cable car all the way up to the top. Once the cable car makes it all the way up, we can simply run onto it, wait until all of your characters get aboard, and then use the cable car wheel on the cable car itself to start moving back down. And this is just a really nice time saver, getting you all the way to the bottom where we need to be. We must find a crash and be purified. True. Fine. 
When you get to the bottom, you'll be at the Rosie Morn Monastery. All we have to do is to follow the path around the left-hand side. Just keep to the left wall and just keep running around, and it will take you exactly where you need to go. So we're just going to follow this path around, and as you get a little ways ahead, there will be a new waypoint that you'll discover along the left-hand side. So once you get that, we can now fast travel to and from this area, and we'll just continue along down this path until we get to a cutscene. That's enough. On your feet. Where are you taking us? If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it and we don't know shit about it. Silence! Move! No! No, 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 I'm not going in there. I won't. Anyone want to join her? As I thought. Through the doors. Now. The captain is expecting you. Forward, carefully. These cultists have the crash on high alert. Okay, let's start off by running ahead, and we're just going to go to that door, and we'll get a little bit of dialogue here, both from the narrator and from our dream visitor. Within the artifact, a feeling stirs. Uncertainty. Your curiosity is getting the better of you. Do not let it. Stay away from the Githyanki. They're hunting you. They want the artifact. They'll stop at nothing to take it from you. Now these Rosemorn Monastery doors have enchanted security. You cannot lockpick this. It is totally impossible. But off to the right hand side there's a skeleton that has the prayer to Lathander. You can read this and then we'll just continue on. So we can't go through the doors here. Instead what we'll do is go to the opposite side and we're going to climb up onto this box here, this wooden crate, and we can really just go straight into this window. So once we're inside, you'll see that there's going to be these little guys. These are kobolds. They'll come out. They're pretty drunk. This guy's going to fall asleep. Well, we do have a character who's very good at killing sleeping characters. So let's go ahead and take out this kobold looter with a sneak attack melee. And Asarian will do a great job at finishing him off very quickly and quietly. So once he's been thoroughly assassinated, we're going to go into the next room. You definitely do not want to hit them with a fire-based weapon like what Lazal currently has because they're so drunk that they will explode when the flames hit the alcohol in their system. So be very careful about using fire. However, we can use it to our advantage. There are a few more enemies around here that are sleeping, allowing us to sneak around and get really nice critical hits as we sneak attack them on the ground and we're going to be able to take out a few of these enemies before we are seen and then the fight will commence in earnest. So once these guys are all gone, we do unfortunately get spotted at this point. I would have liked to kill a few more if possible, however, it just wasn't meant to be. So now what we're going to do is take out a whole bunch of these kobold guys around here and you can see that there's some fire wine barrels and things that we can make explode if we really want to so definitely get a character who has something like the alchemist fire or some sort of fire-based weapon you can use that to your advantage to do extra damage and to make some nice explosions around this area so i could attack this and cause a big explosion here i'm going to toss it up top here and that's going to do a lot of damage to this guy as well you can see his status has a fire wine belly that means that he explodes when he takes fire damage and dies 
So I was able to do a lot of damage there, also put the fire on the ground for them, and now I can just run ahead and we can keep attacking using things like the bonus actions with our unarmed strike Let's with this monk first. here, and we can do some good damage, just taking out lots of enemies in this area. And like I said, these guys aren't too difficult. They have very low HP, only eight HP each, and that makes them really nice and easy to take out. So what we're gonna do is just continue on here, taking out these enemies you'll have to use some range attacks probably to do some decent damage against them but Asarian is an absolute beast when it comes to taking out guys either at close range or at a distance a very very good character to have on your team for pretty much all situations whether you're in a battle or out of battle Asarian is the way to go well, let's just keep on going here doing some extra damage and eventually what's going to happen is the kobolds decide that they want to kind of spice things up and they're going to run down here and they're going to light themselves on fire and cause big explosions which luckily take out all of the enemies in that area and it did very little damage to me so definitely good for us and bad for them uh, they're not too good at the strategy well, there wasn't much more to that fight, just taking out the kobolds one by one, so I skipped ahead to the end. Now just run through that room to the other side, and then you can jump up onto this ledge here. We're going to continue on, and what we're going to do is make progress toward getting another trophy, and that is getting a legendary mace that can be found underneath the Rosymorn Monastery. So what we have to do is to solve a puzzle, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. We're going to get to the main room where we start that in just a moment. So I'm just running around here exploring. There's really nothing back here at this point, so we can just ignore this. And what we're going to do is to head through this little barricade here. You should be able to just use your basic attacks to either punch or slice your way through this barricade. It has 25 HP, so it might take a couple attempts to get through, but you should be able to break through that without much of an issue and then we can proceed on into the building. So once that barricade is out of the way, let's run straight ahead and then over toward the left-hand side. We'll go into the hallway here and then hug the left side to go into another room. And this is the room with the puzzle. So what you can see on the ground is there's going to be a stained glass window. If you inspect it, it will show you little murals on the stained glass for these different weapon containers here. And ultimately, you'll need to open up the stone wall and you'll have to open up what's inside of it. Now, there is a dexterity check looking for a 30 at this point. Very difficult to do, so you can just pick the lock and proceed on without doing this puzzle, but it's unlikely that you'll be able to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is to show you how to actually solve the puzzle and be able to get that without having to roll a whole bunch of very difficult skill checks. So what we're going to do is to jump over this gap and then run straight ahead. There's going to be a door that's glowing gold here. It's the enchanted door. Now we can get through this one with just a lock pick. So we'll switch over to a Starian who is a great lock picker and get right through this. So with all the bonuses we have, we basically get a plus 14 to anything. So as long as we don't roll a one, we should be able to get through anything in this area very simply. So once it's unlocked, we'll open up the door and then we can either destroy the stuff in front of us or simply just jump right over it and on the other side there's going to be a guardian of faith now if we get too close to him he is going to start attacking us so what i want to do is just kind of go around him and then i can start the battle off by doing a sneak attack ranged attack and then that's going to alert him he's going to start attacking us but we just have to keep attacking him as well try to keep your distance though because if you get within that circle he will start to attack you as well and they'll do a little bit of damage to you nothing that you shouldn't be able to handle at this point though so attack him until he's gone and then we'll be able to pick up an item on the ground that he's guarding And there you go, Astarian the goat takes him out solo in one turn. That's pretty good. 
Now, if you look on the ground amongst all of these piles of bones and skeletons, you will see a ceremonial battle axe. You want to pick that up, and that's one of the things that we need for solving the puzzle. There's going to be a couple more of those ceremonial weapons around here, and I'll show you exactly where they all are. So I just wanted to save the game real quick, and then what we're going to do is to hop back over this area, and then we'll be out in the hallway again. So once you're out in the hallway, turn toward the left side and there's going to be the knotted roots right next to you. And you just want to use those to climb up to the top where you'll see a couple giant eagles. And they're not going to be very happy with us either. Animal handling. Turn away from the eagle as you approach, indicating that you are not interested in its nest. We have a skill check looking for an 18. We don't have a lot in terms of the bonuses here, so I do fail this one. That's okay though, we'll just continue on. So we're gonna fight these things, not very difficult fights. Not all my characters have made it up yet, so I do want to switch over to them. They're still hiding back here because they never actually engaged with that Guardian of Faith earlier. So we do want to get them up and get them into the fight. And then it's just a matter of taking out the eagles. They will try to fly towards you, just use some melee attacks and stuff. Not very difficult at all. We should be able to take them out in just a couple turns. One thing that you do need to watch out for is this area is littered with twisting vines. And if you get caught in there and fail a saving throw, you'll actually be immobilized there for a little bit. So be careful. You might want to do some jumping around the area instead of just running blindly toward them. Uh, they are kind of easy to see and you can actually use your cursor to look and see where those things are on the ground. But Jumping is a good way to bypass all of that, getting you close enough to do some decent damage with your melee attacks, or of course just use range attacks to attack them from afar, and we'll take them out pretty quickly. Hungry for the slaughter. With those enemies defeated, you want to go inside their nest, and if you look amongst the things that are in here, you can do some looting to pick up some more alcohol and stuff, but there's also going to be a ceremonial war hammer on the ground. Make sure you pick that up before you proceed on. There is one more weapon that we need to get, but we're going to sidetrack ourselves a little bit just to do a little bit more exploring here. There's a lot of things that we can get and some more experience in this next section, so you can skip this little bit if you want to and we'll proceed right back here in a little bit but I want to show you just another place that you can go to get some really cool items and fight some pretty weak enemies but also giving us some pretty good experience. If you run back behind toward the left here you can get to the ancient Githyanki warrior and if you inspect his body you can see the Githyanki slate. This is just a interesting way for them to communicate with some written texts here. So I'm going to just kind of scroll through this a little bit so you can read it if you want to feel free to pause it if necessary. But we're going to now continue on and we're going to go down below and see some interesting things. So let's head on over here and then we can kind of work our way down this hole in the floor. And you just want to kind of jump down. Don't jump too far or you'll injure yourself, but we can take these little hops down to the bottom. And then there's going to be a couple things that we want to do down here. So now that we're down here, there is an opulent chest in the back corner. Open that up. There's a couple scrolls inside. Feel free to grab those. 
Behind you, there's a skeleton leaning up against the wall. You can inspect him, and he does have a new journal for us to read. Just one more book as we work our way toward those 100 books read. There is a door in the area as well, but it is locked. So switch over to Astari and to lockpick it. Very easy for us to get through this lock as well. With pleasure. Be prepared though because as soon as this door opens you're going to be put into a fight so just make sure that everyone is healed up decently you can just use a short rest to gain back any health that you might have been missing from the fight against either the guardian of faith or the eagles from before now we have to fight a whole bunch of enemies called Gramishkas. They are not very strong at all, so we are able to take them out. But we get a decent amount of experience for killing them all, so go through and eliminate all of them. After the fight, you want to grab the Potion of Animal Speaking. It is a new recipe for us. It's over in the corner here. There's also a lot of books and things in this area. So let's run to the opposite corner here. And on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, there's going to be an iron gate that we can lockpick. So of course, use a star and we really can't mess this up at all, but we're going to lockpick our way into both of these things. They each have a skill check looking for a 14, so very easy for us to get through it with all of our bonuses. Pretty much we can't lose unless we roll a 1 and instantly fail it. But then once we get through it, we can open up the iron gate and then take what's inside of it. So this one has the elixir of necrotic resistance. There's also going to be a book that we can read. So go ahead and grab that. And now let's go over to the other side where we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to open this one up. There's going to also be a scroll of dark vision on the inside and another book. So once you get through the skill check, make sure you grab those two things and then we can keep going. Now at this point, it kind of feels like playing Dark Souls to me, <laughs> where we can like, create little shortcuts and things. Oh. So if you do want to create a shortcut to get back outside of the Rosie Morn Monastery very quickly, you can use the character to break through the barricade here, and then that just provides you a nice path outside. You can jump in and out as you see fit. So what we're going to do now is head back the way that we came. There is the record of complaints, another book to read over here. And that's really all we need to do here. We're going to go back out the way that we came. We just have to make little hops up to the top here. Not every character has the same jump power as the others. So you might need to kind of switch back and forth between characters just to get everyone up because they won't all automatically follow very nicely. But we're going to run back to the spot that has the big sun on the ground this is right by where the eagle's nest was so we're gonna get here and then what we need to do is to head back up into the area where those eagles were so you want to jump over those twisted vines just so you don't get all tangled up and then keep going around until you get to the other side and we're going to now climb back down the knotted roots and get down below there's one more weapon that we have to pick up for the puzzle, and what we need to do is to head on over through these doors on this side. We don't need to lockpick them, we can just go straight on through, and now we're going to go down below. We're going to run down these broken stairs, and then we have to start making our way down a little bit further. Don't keep going down the stairs, we have to get back outside of this building. So what you need to do is to hop your way over to the other side here, and we're going to go through this little gap and that will take us outside. Now stick toward the right hand side, there's going to be some ledges that you can climb up. Get all the way to the top and then there's going to be a grave site at the top and you'll be instructed to dig on the dirt mound here. So let's go ahead and use the shovel that we have and we're going to dig up the treasure that's underneath here. Once we do that we can open up the the wooden chest and we're going to grab the rusty mace inside there's also a little note that we can read too so that rusty mace is the last item that we need in order to solve the puzzle so we have the ceremonial battle axe the ceremonial war axe and the rusty mace all that we collected in this area and now we have to go put them on the pedestals in that puzzle room so let's just head back up and we're going to then jump up the way that we came and we're going to keep going past the room with the guardian of faith 
and continue on. As you go along, there is going to be a book on the ground over here though, so go ahead and read that. It's the old maintenance records. Just one more book in our collection of 100 that we're reading, and we're gonna keep on going the way that we came. So here's the door on the right-hand side with the Guardian of Faith inside of it. We're going to hop back over the hole in the floor and then just proceed through the hallway until we get into the room where we have to place the weapons on the pedestals. I'm going to solve the puzzle in a clockwise fashion, so we'll run past the stained glass and on the right side from the furthest from the entrance, we do see the pedestal here. We need to place the ceremonial war hammer on this one. So whatever character is holding that, go into their inventory and we're just going to place that thing in the world. So here's the ceremonial war hammer. We're just going to set it right up on top and you can see that it starts to glow. That means you got it right. Now let's go to the next one over here. We're going to switch characters and we need to put the rusty mace onto this one. So once you have it selected, place it in the world right on top of that pedestal and it will start glowing. And then there's only one more. So go over to the other side here and we're going to now use that ceremonial battle ax and we're going to put it on top of this pedestal. Once all of the weapons are placed appropriately, the wall with that skill check of 30 has gone down, leaving a pouch on the other side. Let's go ahead, open that up. We can read the note to the next Dawnmaster, and then we will take an item called the Dawnmaster's Crest, which allows us to get a legendary mace and get a trophy at the same time. But we'll do that in the next part. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. That really helps me out in the channel. I'm getting very close to my goal of a thousand subscribers and you can really help me do that. So I'll see you very soon for part 18. Until then, have a good day.